Digital Ramblers, how are you? JJ Cannon, welcome back to episode 78. And like always, I'm joined by my good friend, Chris Gamble. How are you, Chris Gamble? Hey, JJ, good to see you. Episode 78 is another big one, another interview. We're, we're just rolling through these interviews. We've had Logitech last week, Sonos with their big announcements the week before. Who have we got on this week, JJ? This week, we have Casey with Josh.ai voice control, voice control. And man, I'm so excited. This is one of the most posh voice control systems out there. And you know what? Although it's posh, it is not expensive. Yeah, we're, we're going very sophisticated this week. This is voice control for the luxury homes with a high attention to your privacy. This makes it one of the most unique products out there in the smart home market. And we're going to learn a lot more of it from Casey from Josh.ai. For those joining us for the first time, I'm JJ Cannon, CEO of Digital Delight. You can find us at digitaldelight.com. We're located right here in Houston, Texas, where we love creating experiences that are right for your home as well as small business. And I'm Chris Gamble, JJ's co-host over here in the UK. My business, Customized, is based in Norwich in the east of England. We cover East Anglia and London, and we enjoy turning dumb homes into smart homes. If you've ever missed one of our episodes, you can easily find everything that we've been doing for the past year and a half, two years at digitalrambleshow.com. You can find us on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram, and we're on over 11 different podcast streaming services. Yeah, and this show wouldn't be the show it is without the support from our Patreons. Digital Ramble has a Patreon site, so go to patreon.com. Search for the Digital Ramble and for as little as a dollar a month, be a supporter and direct influencer on the show. All right, Gamble, you ready to get into this? Oh, I can't wait to get into this one. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about sophisticated voice control. Hey, Casey, welcome back to the show. Another returning guest. For people that watched the Digital Ramble right back in the early days, Casey was a guest on a breakfast show we did in Cedia 2018 in San Diego, which was a new experience for us to have guests on the show. And, and we went all in and had breakfast and Casey joined us. And that's way back September the 5th. We're going to post the, the video in the description for that, a link to that. So welcome back, Casey. Let us know what it is you do at Josh. Introduce us again to your guests and uh, the floor is yours. Awesome. Yeah, good to be back. Um, I made the joke before we started, but I'll make it again for the audience. Uh, no pancakes this time, but you know, hopefully soon once, uh, once all this quarantine's over. Um, yeah, as far as what I do at Josh, uh, you know, back a couple years ago at Cedia, it was definitely a little bit of everything um, on the business side. Now that the company is growing, uh, it's, you know, a little bit Still Swiss Army knife uh, as far as as far as the business role here and, and touching on a lot of what we do. But uh, nowadays I'm focusing on our partnerships with respect to manufacturing partners, uh, how we can not only build out those experiences to our dealers and our clients uh, with the features and uh, you know give having that feedback to work with with this industry, uh, but also how we can go to market with those those partners uh, as well as some more just operation strategy stuff uh, put together. We made a, a huge shift this year, uh, moving all of our training online. Uh, so that was a big project, but now it that is. it's over, yeah, now it's over, um, especially in, in the circumstances that we're yeah. seeing today, um, it's giving a lot of our dealers uh, something, you know, to keep them busy during this downtime. Um, and they're playing with Josh and getting a lot more engagement um, you know, with us because of having all those materials accessible remotely. You know, several years ago, actually probably five, six years ago, Cedia was in Dallas and my wife and I, we were there and we were up at the top of the W and it was a Cedia party. And I'm, I'm sitting down on this little bench, this cushion in the, in the middle of the, the, the whole party. And this guy comes walking up to me and he sits down beside me and he introduces himself. He's like, Hey, I'm Alex. I'm like, hey, Alex, how are you? He's like, good. And he's like, let me ask you, what do you think about voice control in this space? And I was like, nah, that'll never work. <laughs> 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 I 
was I wrong? Was I wrong? You know, Josh, um, you know, started out as, as a one, I, I believe, as a one-man marching band and has blossomed. Tell us about the business, its size, its location, and who are the founders of, of Josh.ai? Yeah, I mean that's that sounds just like something Alex would would do is just saddle up next to you and you know start striking up a conversation. He's he's uh, the best networker of all of us, uh, getting getting voice and getting Josh out there to the whole industry. Um, and we're we're also very proud. He was he was named to the CDO board this year as well. So uh, just the evolution of kind of where we started and where we are today has been huge. Um, you know, as far as the company, uh, we right now around two dozen to 30 employees we're always growing uh so it's it's hard to keep track of the exact number but uh we're split engineering is based and our headquarters is based in denver colorado out in cherry creek so of course if anybody ever wants to come check out the josh lab we're more than happy to to show you um if you make a, a trek out there uh, we actually did that for cdo last year uh, having some vip tours out there and then uh, where i'm based is our santa monica office uh, that's where our business team is out of so yeah, founders, uh, this, is, this is actually very appropriate uh, because the company is celebrating its fifth birthday uh, pretty much right now. Uh, so we have uh, a lot of marketing and messaging going out around that. Uh, we had an internal call this morning where our CTO, Tim, uh, really you know, thanked a lot of the, the company and, and you know, for everything that all of us do here uh, because this is, this is the brainchild, the dream of, of Tim's uh, where he grew up always kind of watching those sci-fi movies, whether there was, you know, Hal or, you know, whoever the assistant might be that is, you know, taking care of things in the background for these characters. And uh, Tim's dream has always been to create his own assistant to, you know, talk to in his home to, to accomplish these tasks for him. So when him and Alex sank up uh, around five years ago, you know, very, very timely, um, they you know set out with the mission in mind that you know looking at the other control system options in this industry uh, that was you know even before alexa or google or siri were really out yet um they had that vision in mind of voice of ai being that next user interface after you know your keypad or your ipad there was going to be that next step in that evolution and these guys were leading the charge there because of of their past experiences and because of their desire to um, you know, kind of lead into that future of, of what a truly smart home should be. Yeah, I, I do like the, the background story because it was, it comes from their own want to do their own home. And that's always a, it's always a, either it's a recipe for a long road ahead or it's a quick road to success that if you're having that frustrations and, and you've got that itch, then others probably are too. So I always enjoy hearing the background of Tim and Alex linking up because of their own smart home experiences. So it's a voice controlled home automation system built to support natural language voice commands. And that natural language is, is what makes it so appealing when people do see it. So just to clarify for the audience then, Josh is the the platform that controls the products you're not actually having to buy josh lighting system josh touch panels josh heating controls this is the overarching control system for your familiar well-known smart home brands exactly right yeah and then just to kind of backtrack on uh alex and tim as well like they are the clients for this channel like <laughs> they they have the scale of home the the lutron the uh, distributed audio video systems like all the intricacies and nuance you expect to see in a, in a very upscale home and technology incorporated into that uh, that's what these guys are are installing in their own home so this is you know from them a passion that you know they want to have this experience themselves and, you know build that experience for other people to enjoy um, as far as you know josh the ecosystem what's involved exactly right that's something that um, especially you know my role now with uh the manufacturer partnerships. Uh, we want to work with best in class across the board. Uh, we don't, we of course have our own hardware being the Josh micro and that's our, our microphone. And it's also what you need to deploy our software uh, license for each project. Uh, but, you know, we're not going to compete with lighting manufacturers or shades or audio or that's not what we do best. We know what we do. It's, it's natural language processing. 
uh, geared towards home automation. It's the manual uh, interface as well with our app. Uh, it's all these different kind of flexible ways that you'd want to interact with your environment. And from there, we want to build the integrations with the Lutrons of the world, the Sonos is, uh, being a voice and, and UI layer with a Crestron or a Control 4 to make those experiences better for clients um, and really future-proof them. Um, and you know, the list goes on and on, but we work with Sony, LG on the more premium side. Uh, you know, if you have a, a huge theater in your home, you can get a Barco projector and power with Josh. Uh, the receiver brands go on and on. So that's, that's something that we've made a lot of headway, um, especially since I've been at Josh as far as the number of integrations we have and, and the key partners that we do have. Um, and, and right now we have a very compelling ecosystem to work with. Uh, but that, you know, doesn't, there's, that's always going to be something that we keep adding to because there's always cool new devices that are coming out um, and new features and functionality that we need to support. So that's, that's what really interests me is the user experience and how we can make that as, as fun and as, um, as enjoyable as possible uh, as far as just, you know, getting the most out of their technology in their home and making it as easy as possible. Well, Casey, you know, it's fantastic hearing it straight from you, but you've said it a couple of times, the Josh Micro. What is the Josh Micro? And do you need one for every single room or can you have one for the entire house? Tell our listeners, how does this Micro work? Does it have, you know, uh, an app that's with it? Tell us a little bit more about it. Yeah, uh, the, the Micro, it's... It's our far field microphone. It also comes equipped with a touch dial on the surface. So that touch dial, for example, adapts to commands that you just gave. And that's where when I kind of pitch Josh to people, give them the, the overview, I don't really lead with us as a voice platform, although that's what we're most known for. Uh, I really you know, kind of paint the picture that Josh is a, a home automation system and it's built with more so the most natural interaction in mind, given that time that you're you're either talking to it or physically controlling it through the app or even the micro surface where whatever is most natural the easiest in that moment in time uh, we want to provide you with that that option to control your environment so uh, for example like let's say you know I'm in, I'm in my room here and I say dim the lights in that case Josh will dim the lights we have presets on commands like that where we would dim the lights around 20 percent and then maybe I realize, oh, that, that dimmed the lights a little bit too much. It's too dark in here. Or maybe it's, it's not dark enough. Maybe it hasn't set the right mood. I can go over to the dial on the surface of the micro. And it will, at that point, because I just controlled lights in this room, it'll have a yellow uh, circle illuminated around it to signal that it's controlling those lights. And then I could rotate my finger clockwise or counterclockwise on the dial uh, to then manually adjust the brightness of my lights. So it doesn't have to be necessarily a follow-up voice command. It's, it's essentially getting rid of that robotic, you know, sort of follow-up or, or knowing what to say, how to say it, that sort of deal. Uh, and really just interacting with your home, however is best for you. Um, we would recommend that you put a Josh micro in every room that it makes sense where you want that contextual awareness because you notice my example command, I just said dim the lights. I didn't specify in the living room or the kitchen or the bedroom or wherever else. So our microphone knows where it's located. It knows the umbrella of devices that are in that particular area uh, based off of the programming in our portal so that you can you know, have your lights, your shades, your TV, your video in your living room you walk into that space, and this is also something that's proprietary and, and actually patented now by us, is the ability to give compound commands or, or the, what we sort of talk about as being uh, creating a scene on the fly where I can say, you know, dim the lights to 50%, draw the shades and listen to the Beatles. And all those things happen at once uh, because Josh understands that this is you know, supposed to happen in this room based on these devices and understands that, that context of things. Um, so again, room by room for the micro would make the most sense, um, but you can power your entire home with one micro. Uh, and then you, for example, could just walk around with the app and control things manually through the app in every room. Uh, you can also give voice commands and text commands through our app. So you do have to be a little more specific. 
Um, like if I pulled out my app, I'd have to say, you know, turn off the music in the living room, for example, just to tell it where to do that. But that's also a pretty cool feature where um, as long as you have a cellular connection somewhere, you can give voice commands to your home from like across town if you wanted to. Yeah, I remember when I first started to see Josh appearing and it was these compound voice commands, longer, longer voice interactions and less robotic and broken up the communication. But, you know, the technology, the software side, clearly from day one was, you know, way ahead of the competition. But then you taught the competition another lesson by introducing these beautifully designed products. The micro just, you know, I know it scooped up a lot of awards when it came out for its design. And then the app showed the rest of the industry. This is how you, you know, this is how you present yourself to the homeowner. Where, where's the design team's talent coming from? You're not picking just from this established industry already you've, you've you must have brought in people from from outside that just saw it from a different perspective because it's so night and day from from the com competition yeah we, we're our uh our it starts with our, our ceo alex uh he's he's got a, has a huge passion around uh user experience design um everything that uh whether it's the micro itself the form factor the app uh the packaging you know every little element that is part of the josh experience um, our t-shirts, you know, with our dog yeah. logo here, everything goes by Alex for final approval. Uh, to him, you know, there's a, a luxury product, a luxury experience. We want to make sure that, uh, that adheres to the, to the proper vision and, and, mm -hmm. you know, joy that should be associated with that. So, you know, our app is a huge extension of that. Uh, like I said, we kind of burst on the scene as a voice platform, uh, but, because of having to understand the context of being in a home, uh, and then with the limitations of ASR, uh, which is automatic speech, speech recognition and uh, speech to text today, um, we have to make inferences on our end where you know some somebody might say lower the drapes. Oftentimes, that gets misheard as lower the shapes or lower the grapes, but we still need to know that those sound similar to drapes and that we need to close your shades. So, uh, because of that. We, we've built, you know, this, this whole home automation platform. It's not just a, a voice assistant where you're scripting and trigger phrases and responses and kind of pushing a verbal button. This is something that we know the devices you have. We know where they're located, what they're called, the current states of them. And it only makes sense that you have an app to manually control things when voice isn't the right choice, whether that's, um, when the TV is really loud, music's loud, you're throwing a party, like there's all sorts of instances when voice probably isn't the right choice and it's not it's never going to be the end all be all you're always going to want to have a, a real interface for whatever reason so for us the the design the extension of of that um just the the clean simple simplistic look um has been you know iterated a few times with our app we're at a, a place now where we're very happy with where it is uh we have feedback from our kind of council of of dealers as well, uh, based off of you know their experiences with other home automation systems, what we need to include in the app. Uh, but that's kind of a nice convergence of you know our team's innovation, our our vision for what this experience should be, and then the you know, decades of experience that we have to bounce off of with our our you know key uh, dealers as part of that kind of larger group. Friends, Casey with Josh AI is joining us. And Casey, tell me, you know, we were talking about how you could actually create your own scene, but do you need a, a home technology professional in order to deploy Josh in your home to, to get it set up? Absolutely. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's the thing with us is we want to make this experience very simple for the end user. Uh, and we want to make it very simple for the installer, uh, you know, deploying Josh as well. But there are cases where, even a, a simplistic kind of Josh centric solution that could be Lutron, Sonos, a Sony TV, maybe a Roku or, you know, a dish cable box, whatever the case may be, there's still going to be, you know, parts of that installation that your normal kind of DIY consumer may not understand the extent of, uh, where maybe there's a receiver where you have to have certain settings, uh, you know, in that receiver, maybe it's a fixed Sonos output level, being able to just maneuver 
these different elements of your smart home experience where I don't know a lot of you know end clients and know how to program Lutron systems. Maybe maybe like a Caseta or something that's more DIY, but when you get into the realm of like Ratu or you know Homeworks or Ketra, which Ketra is probably the most exciting, coolest thing that I think we do from a UI standpoint, uh, but not to get too off base. Um, you know, there's the installation itself of the components. I believe that that's where the professional is going to be uh, very key in making sure that everything is from a foundational side of things done correctly. Uh, from there, the app and the Josh experience is geared towards the homeowner having a lot of power over their system. And that's where our dealers who do control for, um, especially Crestron and Simple Windows, that's where they're kind of forward by what our app is capable of as far as naming devices, how you want to name them, adding different aliases to rooms so that you could call the living room, the family room or the den or the sitting room or all these different options for people uh, based off what you know one family member versus another may want to call it. Um, and then you of course can create your own scenes, which if you're a Crestron you know, programmer, that involves like recompiling your, your entire Crestron program. There's a lot of steps to that process where for us, since we've pulled in all your devices, lights, shades, thermostats, music video, all these different components, you can, as an end user, create a scene with Josh that's basically you know, looping in all these Crestron components into your own scene, adding your different trigger phrases and things like that for a good morning or a party time or something like that, and not necessarily having to, to reach out to your integrator and being so reliant on them. So, you know, part of that is we believe that homeowners as this smart home concept is gaining more and more, more momentum, uh, they will want to have a little more uh, power and input as far as what's going into that experience for them. Uh, but there's always going to be that professional touch that's needed to make sure that everything is functioning correctly. Um, and on top of that, something that we see a lot of is, is the importance of networking here where, you know, especially now that we're all working out of our home offices as well. Um, I have like my daily internet outage for some reason, because, you know, my, my home isn't quite equipped for, uh, you know, the, the gear that necessary to, to run a job, like a full home automation system. So, uh, because of that, we, we see the professional, you know, being key in that deployment process as well as, um, ongoing education as well. And that's something that we're learning more of uh, the more projects that we have going out there. Um, is the importance for dealers to have the tools to continually educate their clients and, and set the proper expectation while kind of feeding them more information, you know, after week one, after week two, after a month, so that they're, you know, able to learn and, and grow based off of, you know, what they want to accomplish with their, their Josh system. A couple of uh, follow-up questions to that. One, do you need a third-party control system in order for Josh to function? Like, do you need a, uh, a Crestron or a Control 4 or something like that in order for Josh to function? And then, and then my second question, uh, follow-up question is, if the internet goes down or the network goes down, does Josh still function without the network? Nice thing with Josh is we can be as complex or as simple as you want us to be. Uh, that's where kind of a standalone Josh system, we have a bunch of those out there. They could be a, a Lutron, a Sonos, and a, and a Sony. That's, you know, that covers environmentals, audio, video. And that by itself is a, a home automation system completely run by Josh. That's pretty much what our CEO's home looks like, uh, you know, minus a, a handheld remote. So that's a lot of cases where, where another control system comes into play is uh, right now, for example, we don't integrate with security systems directly because the A, it hasn't really been bumped up as a priority, um, but that's also because there's no voice recognition yet that we're confident enough in to understand you know, who's speaking. So obviously that'd be a problem if somebody's outside your home and they say, you know, disarm the alarm and unlock the door. Like we're not going to allow that. Even even when that technology is there, we may not allow that because, you know, who, why would we unlock your door and and and, do, and basically open up your home? Maybe the only voice commands that we would allow you to do that would be you know to lock and to arm because that's more secure, right? Uh, so the control systems come into play uh, when there are either devices that are 
in this environment that we can't talk to ourselves, like security. Uh, today, we, we got a request the other day for like pool and spa control. And in that case, we don't yet have like a JND integration, but um, that's definitely a future roadmap item for us. But in the meantime, you could hit that button through a control four or a Crestron or a Savant. Um, and we could then basically hit that button on our end through Josh. So whether it's a, a third party device or, or you know, product that we don't quite work with yet, or um, a lot of cases where clients want a handheld remote that you know could be the new Control 4 Neo remote, that's, I've seen that spec into a lot of projects because they like the sleek kind of Neo look and feel with the Josh system to be really futuristic for clients. Um, and then the Crestron TSR 310 remote, uh, that's a really unique integration for us uh, because the microphone in the TSR 310, we have a speech module in our in our Crestron module where you can actually give voice commands through the microphone in the TSR 310 that Josh then receives. Wow. So it you know just kind of again makes that home that smart home feel even more connected because everything is communicating with each other at that point. Right now, the way uh, speech to text works and uh, converting a voice file to a text file, that does have to be done in the cloud. Uh, we encrypt everything, uh, anonymize that data so that the services that we use don't know who, who or where it's coming from. Uh, but the you know reliance on the cloud there is that voice control needs the internet to work. So what I often tell integrators, uh, clients is that, your voice experience and really therefore your Josh experience is going to be as robust as your network is. Yeah. You know, in that five years, voice has gone from this new new feature for people that started to appear on their, their cell phones, started to appear in their television remote controls, but now it's become a mainstream way to interact with your technology and to get other things like news, entertainment, weather, things like that. So it's just become a, a normal but the, one of the big topics that always crops up with with voice especially with the the amazon googles of the world people always have this concern of privacy or privacy for our other other audience tell us how josh handles people's privacy because this is a key message that i hear dealers communicating about josh this private voice assistant for your control your home automation yeah yeah so that's that was kind of our lead marketing um last year's cdo we had those great bathroom ads that were <laughs> privacy focused um but yeah i mean that, that wasn't even something that uh, our founders alex and tim envisioned when they first started josh it just so happened that uh alexa and google coming into play that those those concerns with clients as far as you know, these microphones are in my home and they also happen to be provided by the largest search engine and marketplace in the world <laughs> are, you know, like what, what else could they be listening to and, and therefore, you know, doing with my data. So, you know, those, those concerns are, are valid. Uh, you know, we, we train all our dealers on the differences with Josh and, you know, for us, we're a home automation system. We're not here to collect your data or sell you anything else. Um, our, our only purpose with the data that we do collect is to make the experience better based off of how Josh hears clients. And uh, we are very transparent with that. Uh, we, we show the chat history and the device histories and, you know, basically how people are interacting with their home in our portal. And that's something that's actually being added to the iOS app as we speak is uh, the ability to delete commands either individually or, you know, after a week, you know, auto erasing or completely erasing commands uh, you know, for eternity, uh, so that, you know, clients have that peace of mind that when Josh wakes up, which would be after you say the wake word being, okay, Josh, or hey, micro, or okay, home, whatever it hears, it's going to record and, and try to determine how to respond to what you're saying. But, you know, that's, that's a case where maybe you have a guest over named Josh, and maybe that guest named Josh is talking about, you know, something more secret that you don't want, you know, anybody else to hear. In that case, uh, deleting that, that uh, command, um, you know, erasing that, you know, just gives people that peace of mind that, you know, nothing they say is being retained. And you know, that's, that's the Josh difference as far as the privacy thing, side is concerned is um, we're very conscious, especially in this industry, 
Um, we're going into, you know, all sorts of people's homes and, you know, whether they're a politician or a CEO or celebrity of some kind, um, you know, they, they want to make sure that they have power and control over, you know, what's happening behind closed doors. So we want to respect that. Yeah, absolutely. Privacy is one of the biggest concerns for people wanting to, to experience voice control. They want it, but are very anxious, particularly with the other, the other options that are, that are available. And Josh.ai really facilitates that, that privacy aspect of it. And, and really, I believe, delivers a package that is, um, you know, clients can embrace and, and appreciate. I mean, the price is appropriate, the, the ability to control or to program your system after the, uh, the home technology professional has left the house is, uh, is something of, of major value to the homeowner. So thank you, uh, Casey, for coming on the show today and, and sharing uh, what Josh AI can do for, for homeowners and um, uh, small businesses as, as well. And, you know, before we go, there's a question that we ask all of our guests, and it's, um, is there a device outside of Josh AI that you can't live without? Something that, that, that you've got to use, you have got to have in order, you know, to, to, to make your home enjoyable. That's a good one. I, um, you know, I'm always listening to music when I'm working, especially from home. Even in the office, we're always listening to something. I like to think of myself as the DJ in, in our LA office. So um, I'd have to say Sonos. Uh, you know, I, I'm a Spotify guy, you know, being able just to pick out my library and, you know, play it. You know, shoot, I'm more, I was, I was actually very funny. I was on a Sonos call this morning um, with, with the other, you know, my partnership correspondent there. And we were talking about, you know, in line versus kind of the more laid back listeners that, you know, whether you play like a radio station or if you're more, you know, involved and you want to play a specific artist or album and really be in charge of that process. And Sonos, um, you know, lets me do that, uh, you know, kind of curate my own playlists, things like that, that I can then, you know, just toss on and, you know, get to work. So I have to say Sonos is, is super helpful for, you know, whatever occasion it might be, whether I'm heads down working or they're on a party or something. Um, but then I also just got some automated lighting in, in my place in LA too. So uh, that's been, granted it's not Ketra, which hopefully <laughs> one day I'll be able to, to toss that in. But um, I got some Philips Hue light bulbs and I've been, you know, between the color changing and, and all that, um, it's been a lot of fun as well. So um, I'd say both have been have been really nice. I'd, I'd probably give the edge to Sonos just because I'm a, a big music guy. I have a pair of Genelec speakers too that sound pretty good um, with that. But um, you know, very both are very transformative um, experiences with with Josh being that that automation system making it go. Well, we're, we're definitely seeing a trend. I think that's three weeks in a row, JJ. We've had Sonos. <laughs> This is not an advert for Sonos, but yeah, it's been everybody's favorite so far, and and it's yeah. one of our, one of our favorites in our audience. Um, and lighting control too. Yeah, I yeah, mean. yes, yeah. Last week, Logitech Pike from Logitech talked about his Philips Hue lighting as well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, they're fun. Yeah, why not? Of yeah, yeah. So it sets the mood. It sets the vibe. I mean, both. So you use you can use Josh AI voice control to easily set the mood of of your lighting ambiance as well as the music that you're that you're simply playing throughout your home yeah i can you know it's it's like not only a color i could say something like make the lights tangerine like not even a you yeah. know a <laughs> rainbow color but something you know kind of off base yeah. uh, but i can also you know maybe i'm watching a movie and i can tell josh make the lights warmer or cooler and that's something with our our catcher integration but it also moves over to the philips u stuff is um, it changes the temperature of the lights so that, you know, just the, it either makes the white a little bluer or a little more on the orange side, uh, to set that proper, that proper mood, which I mean, lighting, at least to me is a huge part of, you know, all of this, this home automation, um, experience that we're putting out there. So it's very, to me, it's, it's a huge part of it. Yeah. We'll post well, some, some videos with, with Josh controlling Ketra, because I know that your booth at, cedia last year there was we did a 
a sit in on one of the demonstrations, but there were some nice videos of Ketra working with with Josh and the way that you were able to tune that lighting uh, so accurately and to to alter the mood of a space. And and there was a specific uh, case where you were altering the light in front of a piece of artwork, and it it changed the the look and vibe of the artwork just by tuning that that white light. Completely changed it. Mm. And that's uh, just to, you know, ex the extension of that is the, like the wellness side. I think if anything, these, um, these times that we're in now and then going back to work and, you know, people now, you know, maybe emphasizing their home environment a little more for that well-being, you know, we don't, we may not have any data, you know, quite yet around like actual health statistics, but um, as far as making their homes more conducive for wellness or well-being, since we can't really tie those metrics in, um, it'll be really interesting to see, you know, products like Ketra or Philips Hue or, uh, you know, how circadian rhythm and, and these different you know, kind of stay at home, just environmental devices, um, you know, kind of grow with the rest of home technology going forward. That's something that we're very aware of and, and a part of as well on the jaw side is, um, and that's something we've heard as well with voice. Um, if anything, you know, this, this is a, a difficult time for a lot of, of uh, you know, of us out there, especially our, our, you know, partners out there in the field. And we're very thankful that, you know, a lot of them have been deemed essential and that, you know, they're still working every day and we're getting Josh, you know, installations going out there every day. Um, but, you know, voice control, um, being hands-free, there's a lot of benefits and, you know, not necessarily touching a light switch or a remote control that other people have touched and, you know, who knows what germs are on there. So, you know, we see the, the um, situation that, that we're facing, you know, possibly being a, another catalyst for voice control um, and, and how we can, you know, better tell that story to our dealers and, and you know, them to their clients. Casey, is there any uh, life safety or wellness outside of lighting that Josh is starting to sway towards, you know, in the sense of like, is this a, you know, we've talked about this being a, a luxury type of product, but is this something that, that maybe an older couple might be able to embrace, you know, life safety? Have you seen any examples of that being used in interesting ways uh, from the installation community? Yeah, absolutely. So that's, that's a case where, again, like we don't, we may not have a direct integration with like an alarm.com or somebody where you can push that button that says, you know, Hey, I, I've fallen and I need help or something like that. But, um, the, you know, thanks to the creativeness of our, of our dealers, uh, that could be a case where they create a, a Lutron keypad where the button, you know, being pressed could be a, a call for help, um, for example, or a Crestron or a control for macro same same idea uh basically they bring that into josh and then we can assign a various number of, of trigger phrases to activate that scene and then you know the proper uh, you know either support staff maybe in an elderly facility or um you know the authorities be it an ambulance or, or whoever else may be called uh, when that button is hit so we've absolutely seen that uh, not only with you know couples living on their own you know in a home uh, but also quite a few of our partners have uh, contacts and projects in these elderly facilities uh, where we see a lot of opportunity uh, where voice can really help these people and and cut down you know possibly on nurses time if they're you know running around checking on people uh, where you know if voice control can adjust a light or turn a channel on TV you know that leaves a lot more time for for these essential you know nurses and, and caretakers to use their time more efficiently where voice control could kind of take over that, that automation of their environment um, in a way that, you know, helps everybody. And we're also doing some development now with uh, motion sensing and, uh, you know, some other technologies there where, you know, maybe if somebody hasn't moved in a few hours or, um, you know, we notice that they are going, going to the bathroom, you know, more often than they have been previously, you know, that's a, a change in behavior where then we can alert somebody proactively around that. So these are all, uh, you know, aspects of the Josh experience where they may not be here today, but they're on our radar and coming hopefully sooner than later. That's really cool. Really cool. And uh, <clears throat> I know you guys are a hardworking team, so much talent, and I, and I know you're going to deliver this. And what's great is you're listening to 
your dealers, you're listening to the, the people that are living with Josh every day. So where can people find out about Josh and, and start to follow your journey? Because you guys are in it for the long haul. I can see a, a long roadmap in front of you. Where can, where's the best place for people to go to find out about Josh? Yeah, uh, you know, visit our website, uh, just josh.ai will be the first thing that pops up. Uh, feel free to reach out to our our team, uh, sales at josh.ai, if you have any, you know, questions about the product, if you want to become a dealer, uh, you know, if you're a client who wants it, we can, we're happy to point you in that direction too. So, uh, you know, we're, we're very easily accessible. We're on all social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter as well. Um, josh.ai across the board as far as the, the tags there. Um, but yeah, we, as you said, we're in it for the long haul. I don't know if we, if we talk about it yet on this call, but you know, as far as future development and, and things like of that nature, um, we, we just closed a round of, uh, our series A funding, uh, last week. So, um, as far as, you know, kind of doubling down and, you know, having that buy-in from other people, you know, investing in us, uh, we're very excited with, you know, that development and, you know, where that's going to take us. Fantastic. JJ, you going to take us out? Yeah, Casey from Josh AI, thank you so much for investing your time with us and sharing with our listeners the possibilities of bringing Josh AI into their homes and incorporating their devices into a secure voice control system as well as a, a fantastic app. So thanks for joining us uh, once again. Of course. Thanks again for having me. Hopefully we can uh, do this again soon. Maybe at CDO with some, some pancakes over breakfast again. <laughs> All right. You got it. Thank you, Casey. And everybody remember that if you don't know, ask a home tech pro. JJ, your mic's not too bad this time, so that know if you need to do all that muting again so it added a okay. little, little delay last time all right there we go okay we're recording so i'll count us in from five four three and what was the third part of that question the, the founders yeah. the founders okay. yeah because uh, the second one's a good question <laughs> so it was the first one uh but yeah the, the uh the internet question internet. the internet, internet. Yeah. so